Welcome to Cebu Expat by Matt Wilkie, discussing expat life in the Philippines. The Philippines copycat business. Um, this is quite a funny one, actually. What you have is you decide to come up with this business idea that um, isn't that extravagant, isn't that big. Maybe you're selling ice water or something very simple. Uh, you've got a, a demand for it. You've got a basketball court outside, something, a small business. Um, then somebody copies it. Your neighbor thinks that's a wonderful idea. I'll do that as well. And then the neighbor down the road does it. And then it, so the business literally gets watered down. <laughs> which is quite funny with it being an ice water business but I just wanted to give a small one because it's easy to duplicate now the funniest thing is when their business fails it's your fault because you came up with the original business idea that's how people think now from a western perspective that doesn't make any sense but in the Philippines it makes sense locally uh, this is why people will say if you've got a business go for something a bit more complicated the reason being is that if it takes high investment or something people locally can't do, then you've got no competition. Anything a local can do will get copied. It's why when you go to the markets, you'll see all the vendors selling the same thing in a row, uh, even to the point that they can be stacked the same. Um, completely bizarre, but it's all about he started the business first, so if, the, his, if mine fails, it's his fault. Um, don't ask me why for that that's where that logic comes from so the best businesses to do are those that are offshore those that um, are extremely complicated with experienced and knowledgeable people uh, the you know the IT industry etc software programming etc because it's very difficult to source those people in the first place so you never ain't going to copy it uh, the internet calf we had was a prime example of where it got copycatted. We started off with one because we built the building, put put a load of people in, uh, first set of machines, then built an extra machine every uh, week till we'd actually filled the internet calf. But as soon as that one opened in the first month, I think there were seven other new internet calves in the area. Um, how many of them to, are there today? The answer is, I believe, is none. Because um, the first thing is, a lot of these are on borrowed money. Um, so if the business ain't really viable, then they can't afford it. Next one is, that it's on OFW money, uh, which is overseas Filipino worker. So it's not really their money, so they're not really interested. Um, after a month, the uh, their uh, mother or sister or brother gets bored of doing it so when it should be open say 12 hours a day it's now open for um, you know it gets that silly so over a period of time if you actually stay there the longest you'll probably out survive most of the competition the other thing is the peso peso machines on the internet calf side by the way are the best way to do it they're just coin slotted no headaches no hassles um and we put them in the arcade machines outside the house we didn't care that what anybody else was doing we had five machines there they were just a license to print money um didn't need to watch them because people just come along put the money in then go home nobody ever tried to rob them or anything else um because it was inside a compound so they're you know they're aware that they couldn't rob them even if they wanted to but you also find in certain communities you don't really get that sort of problem it's when you start getting people outside your own community you get problems um <laughs> an example of this was a neighbor i think it had some shoes stolen and somebody had their motorbike stolen um, a week or so after. But the motorbike was stolen by, um, he was visiting somebody, there was a neighbor of ours. So he suspected the guy had stole his shoes. Well, no, somebody caught the guy had stole the shoes. That's what it was. Um, so he then assumed he'd stole the motorbike. So what does he do? He stabs him. Um, to the point that the guy nearly bled to death by the time he got to the hospital. That is why 
things in your own community don't really happen too much because there's a good chance somebody will kill them. Um, people don't really talk about it, but there is a lot of shootings and stabbings in the Philippines, and some of it so are very trivial stuff. Um, that guy, I don't even know if he stole the motorbike or not. It's just that it all started with the shoes, and this was like a week after, so automatically he was the bike thief. Um, I was just doing something else, and it come up in a conversation that such and such had been stabbed, and then I'm like, "Why? What happened?" And then it all went over about the shoes and everything. And I'm like, "Okay, yeah." <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, you don't really get it as long as you're keeping your own people in your own community. They sort of look after each other. They don't like people outside the community. Uh, they don't don't appreciate them being there. From foreigners, though, it's a little bit different, but Filipinos generally don't like people that they don't know from outside. Um, you know, Fili what I mean is Filipinos don't like Filipinos from outside. So like when you get the scavengers come around and stuff, they don't like being in the neighborhood. Um, they'll make sure the gates are locked and stuff because they know they're likely to steal stuff if they can get their hands on it. Um, that's just part of life. Sort of slightly off tangent again. Um, but yeah, I just want to talk about the copycat business. Um, it's why a lot of businesses can fail in the Philippines because people copy each other. Um, and I said, there's a lot of uh, overseas Filipino workers that are trying to fund things for the family because if they can fund them and get the family self-sufficient, they they should need their wallet a lot less on a regular basis which is why they're trying to encourage some of their family members to pull their finger out in some ways. All right, thanks for watching.